Okay, so this is an extremely annoying question for everybody involved, all right? And this is going to provide you value as far as how to diagnose mitochondrial disorders. I say annoying for everybody involved because these biochemistry terms and the answer choices are fully loaded, okay? There's a lot of explanation involved, and they're extremely uh, difficult to uh, differentiate when you're first studying for the step one. I'm going to try to be as concise and articulate as I can be uh, in terms of addressing these terms, okay? Now make this a fucking 90-minute clip. Now, first things first, USMLE wants to see that you can diagnose a mitochondrial disorder. There's a classic tetrad constellation of findings, uh, hypotonia, lactic acidosis, and then an eye and an ear problem, okay? This is what we see for mitochondrial disorders. Now, Hypotonia lactic acidosis makes sense. Muscles have high concentrations of mitochondria, as do the uh, the eyes and the ears. Okay, so even if you're not sure of the exact diagnosis, uh, if you're reading this stem, you could say, okay, that kind of sounds like a mitochondrial disorder. And then uh, this image is showing us ragged red fibers. You do not need to know this image for USMLE. I just decided to be an asshole and throw in this for the sake of it, but. Uh, this is showing us ragged red fibers, okay? So ragged red fibers uh, refers to clumps of diseased mitochondria within the sarcolemma of muscle fibers. So this is MRF syndrome, myoclonic epilepsy with ragged red fibers. Once again, USMLE doesn't give a fuck that you actually know of uh, MRF syndrome or labor hereditary optic neuropathy. They just want to be able to uh, they just want you to be able to diagnose a mitochondrial disorder in general based on this constellation of findings that we already discussed. So you can see the two-year-old boy, our patient, has a more severe presentation than uh, his four-year-old sister. We make note of that. Now we look at the answer choices. Heteroplasmy, choice A, that is the correct answer. This is a high-yield term that is associated with mitochondrial disorders. Now in order to explain this, firstly, Mitochondrial disorders follow maternal inheritance pattern. So they're transmitted only from mother to child, okay? Males do not transmit disease. So when you're looking at a pedigree and you're like kind of you're trying to ascertain the best you can what the uh, inheritance pattern is, you'll notice it only goes from mother to child. Males do not transmit. And you'll notice that unlike X-linked recessive disorders, girls can get it. Okay, so uh, that's mitochondrial inheritance maternal only. And the reason for this is because when we have fertilization, it's the ovum that it's the oocyte that has the mitochondrial genes, the sperm doesn't. So each cell in eukaryotes has hundreds to thousands of copies of mitochondrial genes, okay? Different combinations of mitochondrial genes. So each oocyte during their production, each oocyte is going to receive a different allocation, a different combination of mitochondrial genes. So if a patient has diseased mitochondria, uh, varying proportions of these hundreds to thousands of copies, varying proportions of these diseased mitochondria are going to go to each respective oocyte as they're produced. So when we have uh, heteroplasmy, this is referring to uh, variation in disease severity as a result of different proportions, different uh, ratios of diseased mitochondria that are inherited. Okay, so the two year old boy, uh, compared to his sister, would have a greater fraction of diseased mitochondria. Uh, this is referred to as heteroplasmy. Okay, so he's uh, he has a more severe presentation. Now, Looking at some of the other answer choices, all right? I'm going to do the best I can to stay concise here. Now, for imprinting, maternal versus paternal. Imprinting refers to silencing of genes. Now, although we receive two alleles of each gene from uh, one from each parent, respectively, sometimes these genes are silenced in one parent, are coming from one parent. Why this occurs, no fucking idea, okay? It just does. So... You'll receive a copy, uh, two alleles of a gene, one from each one from each parent, and depending on the gene, sometimes it's silenced coming from mom, that's maternal imprinting. Sometimes the gene is silenced coming from dad, that's paternal imprinting. So 
maternal imprinting in terms of disease refers to prater willi syndrome. So you don't need to know the genes. prater willi syndrome is when you have a gene inherited where it's silenced coming from mom, and then the copy you get from dad that's supposed to be wild type and functional is diseased slash mutated or deleted. So Willie hates his dad. That's the mnemonic. Willie hates his dad, Prater Willie syndrome, because dad's gene is deleted. And then mom's was silenced. Okay. Her, her copy can by all means be a healthy copy, but it's silenced. So maternal imprinting, and then it's deleted coming from dad. Willie hates his dad. That's Prater Willie syndrome, which is hyperphagia, eating too much and mental retardation. And then paternal imprinting refers to Angelman syndrome. Okay. Happy puppet syndrome. So this is when you have a, co a uh, it could by all means be a healthy copy of the gene coming from dad, but it's silenced. And then mom is not an angel because her gene is deleted. Okay. So you receive mom's gene. It's deleted slash mutated. Okay. And dad's could have by all means uh, been a normal copy, but it was silenced. So uh, that's as concise as I can be for imprinting for USMLE. Maternal imprinting is Prater Willis, and uh, paternal imprinting is uh, Angelman syndrome. Now, incomplete penetrance uh, this versus variable expressivity, okay? These are very important for genetics. Now, penetrance refers to the, uh, the probability that a genotype uh, is expressed as the phenotype. Okay, so for example, if we have a disease where there is complete slash full penetrance, it means if you receive the diseased allele, you are 100% of the time going to have the diseased phenotype. NF1 is an example of complete penetrance, okay, full penetrance. Uh, whereas BRCA, BRCA1 and 2, the breast cancer genes, these are classic for incomplete penetrance. You've heard of skipping a generation, right? So uh, BRCA, incomplete penetrance, sometimes the disease genotype uh, results in a normal phenotype, skips a generation, that's incomplete penetrance. Whereas NF1, if you have the disease allele, you will always have a diseased presentation of some kind, that's complete penetrance. Now, we contrast that with variable expressivity, which refers to uh, variable presentations of uh, resulting from a diseased allele. And it must, it, there's the mandatory requirement that the disease has complete penetrance. Okay, so NF1 we used as our example of complete penetrance. So variable expressivity means in a family, let's say mom has a mutation NF1, she could have pheochromocytoma, leash nodules, the iris hamartomas, neurofibromas, whereas her son with the same diseased allele he only has, let's say, axillary and groin freckling, okay? So they have variable expressivity. They have variation in their presentation uh, with respect to a disease that has complete penetrance. And now I'm going to compare this to pleiotropy. This is where it gets even more confusing and annoying. So pleiotropy refers to one gene resulting in many different phenotypes. And the U.S. simile example for this is lee frau meni syndrome, so mutation in TP53, which codes for P53 tumor suppressor gene, or tumor suppressor protein. So a mutation in TP53 can result in uh, varying cancers, such as dad has pancreatic cancer, his brother has colon cancer, uh, the grandmother has uh, liver cancer, okay? So a mutation in TP53 can result in many different types of cancers, differing presentations for mutation of that same gene. And you say, but I don't get it. How is that different from variable expressivity? Because you just said NF1, muta a, a single mutation NF1, for instance, uh, could, could cause variation in presentation. So what's the difference with pleiotropy? It's that variable expressivity refers to a predictable spectrum of disease. So NF1, we know what to expect. There's a spectrum. They could get neurofibromas. They can get axillary and groin freckling. They can get leash nodules. They can get uh, pheochromocytoma. They can get weird brain cancers such as oligodendroglioma, ependymoma. It's a predictable spectrum, okay? We're not expecting somebody to get uh, 
follicular thyroid carcinoma in NF1, okay? So it's a predictable spectrum, and there's variable presentations, and the condition is completely, fully penetrant. So that's variable expressivity, whereas pleiotropy, it's not a predictable spectrum. Someone in the family, uh, people in the family with leaf from many syndrome, one person getting osteosarcoma, another getting ovarian cancer, okay? These presentations are not predictable. It's more just P53 mutation can cause any type of cancer. Okay, so uh, for USMLE, you need to take home that pleiotropy is leaf from many syndrome, P53, and refers to one gene that can result in many different phenotypes, okay? And it's not predictable, the uh, resulting phenotypes, okay? Whereas, whereas variable expressivity is a predictable spectrum, such as NF1, and we must have complete penetrance, okay? And once again, a lot we can discuss. I know these terms are fully loaded. So in short recapitulation, you need to take home that mitochondrial diseases have a tetrad constellation of hypotonia lactic acidosis and then an eye and an ear problem, okay? You have to use your fucking head. If you get a question where uh, they say ragged red fibers in the vignette, the kid has hypotonia, and they only mention an eye problem, that's still a mitochondrial disease, okay? And the ragged red fibers refers to diseased mitochondria that are clumped within the sarcolemma of muscle fibers, buzzy term for mitochondrial disorders, and that heteroplasmy is a high-yield term associated with mitochondrial disorders, and it's just varying proportions of mitochondrial genes that are allocated to the offspring, resulting in uh, varying severity of presentation, okay? So I'm going to make more questions on uh, these concepts because there's a lot to unpack. As I said, uh, annoying for everybody involved, but that's it for now.